coal that belongs to American taxpayers, oil that belongs to American taxpayers, gas that belongs to American taxpayers. Under the current system, we let people, operators, come in and, and extract those resources uh, and sell them. And, and the way American taxpayers get paid for this is they get 12.5% of what's extracted. But what we find is that the operators, many of them, they sell this, these resources uh, to, uh, to a friend uh, in what we call a, a, an NAL, a non-arm's length transaction, uh, a sweetheart deal, so that they're, pay they're selling it for much less than market price, and then that other party turns around and sells it for full value. So in other words, American taxpayers are being ripped off. It's as simple as that. If I let somebody sell my car on my behalf and I get a percent of the proceeds, obviously I want them to get the best price possible. If they turn around and sell it to their spouse for half a blue book value, uh, and then their spouse turns around and sells it for full market price, uh, I'm being ripped off uh, and, I'm, and I'm not happy about it. This is as exactly what's happening. It's not fair to the American people. Now I have a bill on this. This is the uh, Coal Royalty Fairness and Communities Investment Act that addresses the coal bit of this. It's H.R. 3303. It rectifies the primary problem we're here to t discuss today by closing this loophole and ensuring that the federal government receives fair compensation for the coal extracted from public lands, coal that it belongs to the American taxpayers. It then directs a portion of those recovered funds to assist struggling coal communities to diversify their economies, increase human capital development, and stimulate economic growth. Uh, Mr. Bucks, I want to invite you to uh, answer this question. There was a report from Headwaters Economics earlier this year that found that closing this loophole by valuing coal at the point of final sale such as the power plant where it would be burned, as you've mentioned, and deducting transportation costs, it would result in roughly a $139 million additional royalties going to the American taxpayers every year. A coal company funded, uh, 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 funded a critique of that study, which refuted Headwater's conclusions and basically said that coal brokers were a non-existent part of the market. Uh, Mr. Bucks, you have a huge amount of experience overseeing the coal industry and their practices. Uh, will you give us your take on that? Uh, Representative Cartwright, I'll, I'll try to be uh, as succinct as I can be in what is a, a broad and complicated area. My take on it, let's, let's, let's start with the estimate of the revenue uh, to be gained by a uh, a system that more nearly conform, conforms to the requirements of the law, which is what the Headwaters Economic Study was, uh, was, uh, uh, was looking at. And using secondary data, uh, in my judgment, and having looked at many such reports of that type, it's a very valid study. It was then critiqued by a coal company hiring another uh, group of statisticians and economists who basically uh, issued a blistering critique of it on the basis of uh, the data wasn't the right data. Uh, I've reviewed that. In fact, Headwaters Economics was using the right kind of data. It has limitations because it's secondary data. And I don't think the critique is, 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 is as strong as the, as the wording of the critique. The critique also didn't address all the issues for which it's uh, been represented. So I think that they, the, they're, whether it's the exact dollar amount that, uh, or something close to the dollar amount that Headwaters Economics uh, uh, was estimating, it certainly indicates that there, is, there are real dollars here at stake for the American people. That's the bottom line, whether it's exactly this or that. The other thing I would point out, which is a fundamental problem here, I always thought it was curious that the coal company went out and hired a, uh, another economics firm to basically engage in a food fight over statistics. Right. When right. in fact, the coal company has the true facts within their own records and it's all secret. Right. And I, secret I to the American people. Let me interrupt you here, yeah. Mr. Box. I, I would ask you, you've looked at uh, my bill, the Coal Royalty Fairness and Communities Investment Act, H.R. 3303. 
Uh, would, that, would the solution proposed in my bill close the loophole we're talking about and create a level playing field for companies uh, who do not exploit it? Representative Cartwright, absolutely. It's excellent legislation. It establishes a direct valuation system and adds support to Interior to continue to collect the data necessary to make that work. It's a property tax style system that will work far better than the corporate self-reporting income tax style system we've had. It's an excellent piece of legislation. Thank you, sir. I yield back. 